Terry Barber is a best-selling author and founder of Lighthouse Catholic Media. Jesse Romero is a retired law enforcement officer, a former kickboxing champion with a master's degree in theology. And together, they share a passion for evangelization and PhDs in common sense. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. To join the show, call 888-526-2151. Here's Terry and Jesse. The eyes of the Lord are upon those who love him. He is their mighty shield and strong support, a shelter from the heat, a shade from the noonday, a guard against stumbling, a help against falling. That's Sirach chapter 34, verse 16. I love these Bible verses that talk, that, that have power injected in them. As a man, I mean, this is just something for me. Here's another one, Psalm 18, verse 3. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. These words, I'm telling you, the Bible was written for men. You know what book was written for sissies? Playboy. Okay? Sissies read Playboy. Amen, brother. Men read the Bible. That's it. Okay? It's a book for men. Got a great, uh, pull up a chair. Yeah. Pour yourself something to drink. Terry, Jesse, uh, the two, uh, we're, we're basically two people that love the Lord Jesus Christ, two evangelical Catholics. Yep. We're not right versus left. We're right versus wrong. And uh, got, a, got a great article here about how the LGTB movement used fake science to push gay marriage. Okay? Now, I'm just reading the article. It says gay marriage. Terry, me say homosexual marriage. That's right. But it quotes the article. There's a, a friend of ours by the name of Austin Roos. This guy's one of those truth tellers. Austin Roos wrote a book. It's called Fake Science Exposing the Left Skewed Statistics, Fuzzy Facts, and dodgy data. And in this article, he basically says that the entire argument about, hey, kids turn out the same with homosexual and lesbian couples as they do with heterosexual couples. All of this has been done. When you read the article, yep. they've basically been used what's called bias sampling, or they've been using what's called selective sampling. In other words, if you ask 10 homosexuals, hey, uh, isn't it the same raising homosexual uh, kids with homosexuals a- as it is with heterosexuals? What do you think by a sampling, by going to 10 homosexuals, what do you think they're going to tell you? That's the point of the whole article. Exactly. Fake science once again, and he's exposing it. This reminds me of the same thing that happened 50 years ago when Dr. Bernard Nathanson, the largest abortion clinic in the Western world, told me to my face that we made up statistics we faked the statistics for abortion to show people that it would be a good thing for the culture to allow abortion in this country. And it's basically, if you tell the lie often enough, people will believe it. And I see the same thing in this article that they're doing on so-called same-sex marriage. I, as I say, I never say gay. I'm sorry, I'm gay. The word gay means happy. I'm a happy dude, Okay. It's homosexual so-called marriage is what they're talking about, and it's all phony with the statistics just like they did it 40, 50 years ago when they tried to slide in abortion. This time, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, the answer is I don't buy it. There's a lot of other things that people that have more of a progressive secular worldview, uh, they, they, again, they just uh, pad the numbers. For example— Planned Parenthood has been caught saying that, oh, yeah, most of what we do is pap smears and and this, that, and the other. And it's been demonstrated that they've been lying. Wrong. That 90, 97% of what they do is basically abortions. Amen. And, again, the whole thing about climate change or global warming, boy, oh, boy, uh, you know, you got a, a, a large swath of scientists that say this is a hoax. But if you dare say anything against it, you're called, uh, you know, you're called the truth denier or something. What I'm saying is this this article is exposing something. That science has been politicized. Me and my wife have talked about this a lot. You know, it's very sad. Where science was something that was supposed to be trusted, black and white, right and wrong. But now, as a result of again, as a as a as a result of the politic politicization of science, 
you have scientists that uh, receive large endowments from, let's say, George Soros or other people, and so they're going to skew the evidence uh, based on on, on who is uh, writing the nice big endowments. And this is what's very sad, is that science was given to us by the Catholic Church. Did you hear that? Science, co- True science comes from God, because all truth comes from God. But this article once again exposes that on the issue of so-called same-sex marriage, they've been using bias sampling or selective sampling to pad statistics to tell people, oh, it's all the same, and common sense tells us, no, it's not. Now, that's a fact. And again, if you want to get these articles, go to CatholicRC.org or JesseRomero.com. I'm a little uncomfortable telling you this next story. Yes, I was going to wait to the break because it's a great teaser, but I just want you to be aware of this. Uh, I have a ser- several series because I try to help people who have same-sex attraction. I love those people. I don't hate people say, you guys are all, no, we love them with the truth, okay? I've got a guy, Thomas Schumer, who's been on our show, What Every Catholic Needs to Know About Homosexuality. He's a therapist. A whole day's worth of talks. You're welcome to get it. Or Confronting the Gay Agenda, Tim Staples, Deacon Bob McDonald. That's another one. Or I have a man, Causes and Treatments of Homosexuality. Dave Peacock was at our conference here. All this is your to you, if you have friends or relatives who have same-sex attraction, help them out by calling 877-526-2151, 877-526-2151. Also, my next point I'm going to make is something that if you have little ones next to you, you might want to shut the radio down just a little because this story is so brutal that I'm like, well, you know what? People need to hear it because I'm, I'm so impressed. you remember a couple weeks ago we were lamenting Bishop Andrew, the Bishop of Cameroon, Cameroon, who was murdered, and they said, well, how was he murdered? And he was in the river where they found him, you know, days later. Well, there was a memorial mass this week for Bishop Andrew, who died under mysterious circumstances. <clears throat> Listen to this. A cleric who's taken over the administration of the diocese, he's a Monsignor, <clears throat> he, you know what he did? Something in America we would never do. And I have to tell you something. I'm with this guy. Wait till you hear what he did. He charged the authors of the murder were in the church. What? At the ch- in the church? Yes. Pretending to sympathize that the bishop died for standing up against homosexuals in the priesthood. What? He's, in response, he's the current apostolic administrator of the diocese. Monsignor Joseph delivered a blunt answer on Thursday during a homily at a memorial mass. Can you imagine if some bishop, some Monsignor said that to, in our country? Whoo! The bishop, he said, was killed, he said, because he stood up against homosexuals in the church and the priesthood. <clears throat> Pointing in the front row of the church. Picture this, everybody, in your mind. He's, he's, he's preaching in the church. Front row of the church, most of the government ministers and other important personalities sat, casting a sweeping look at his fellow priests and bishops. He charged them. He said, shame to all those people in black suits and black spectacles always sitting in front rows of church. He said, shame to all those priests who have come here pretending to sympathize. These are the people who killed our bishop because he said no to the homosexual penetration by the priests in our diocese. He said those who actually killed the bishop were people in positions of power, but it was homosexual priests who betrayed him. I don't know how much longer that guy is going to be breathing because I don't know too many people who have the guts to say that. But I'll tell you what, he's backed by popes. Jesse, is he not? Yeah, the last two popes, in fact, I'm picking, grabbing some articles right now. Yeah. Uh, Pope Benedict, he said right before he retired or resigned, yep. he said that, uh, that there was a homosexual cabal in the Vatican. And that's many people theorize, many good people that have written on the topic of why he's resigned. They say that that's probably why he resigned, uh, because there's so many wolves around him in the Vatican. He needed somebody younger to fight them. And probably within about the first six months in Pope Francis' papacy, within the first six months, he had mentioned that his biggest problem, his biggest challenge would be to clean the homosexual cabal within the Vatican. So the last two popes have addressed this. So the fact that a Catholic bishop in Africa gets killed by a homosexual lobby within the church, that doesn't surprise me because this problem 
has reached the highest places. Yep. L let's just be honest. The enemy's not only outside the Catholic Church, okay? It's well within the walls of the Catholic Church. That's what Paul is And some t sometimes it's perfectly camouflaged, yep. just like the Trojan horse back in, in Greek mythology. And we're not, we're not dealing only with the problem of homosexuality, which is, which is a problem in itself. We're dealing with the problem of a homosexual lobby. Did he catch that? Is this a microphone on? Within the church. It's a sad fact. And this is why, in many places, you, you, what do you hear from the pulpit? Silence on this topic. Silence. It's not mentioned. Because we have, in, we have dioceses where, again, the lobby is so strong that this is something that's just not mentioned within the diocese, within the pulpits. And the fact is, a lot of this obviously comes from the influence of the media, the influence of the... Uh, of, of, of the it's, it's sad to say that the secular world has Influence. influenced yeah. the church more than the church has influenced the secular world. It breaks my heart, but that's the truth. And, you know, we could be quiet and not say a word to you, but, you know, we need to pray for our priests and our bishops that they'll have the guts like this Monsignor did and calling it for what it is. Folks, you're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. We are giving away some CDs on helping people with same-sex attraction, the homosexuality, the manly experience, causes and treatments, or what every Catholic needs to know about homosexuality. Just call 877-526-2151 or go online to catholicrc.org. When we come back, we've got something regarding sports and patriotism that you won't want to miss. We'll be right back. Back to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. You know, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, back in 1973, he said that the lady was going to save the church. And uh, it was a prophecy from Fulton Sheen. One of the beautiful things I love seeing all over the country is that the lay people are holding retreats, conferences, uh, you know, uh, again, just events where Catholics come together, where they get catechized, where they get evangelized, where some Catholics encounter the love of God for the first time. Uh, they Catholics walk out of there with a deeper understanding of their Catholic faith. I was in Arkansas this weekend, and uh, it was beautiful. I was there doing a Spanish event all weekend, and I was very surprised to see how many Hispanics there are <laughs> living in Arkansas. Yeah, really. I mean, the church was full. It was like, what? Arkansas? I thought it was, looked like Los Angeles out here to me. So, uh, you know, the church, uh, it's good to see that lay people are responding to the call of, uh, of, of uh, f opening their heart to Christ and, and rolling up their sleeves, trying to learn their faith and making a difference and evangelizing the culture. And this past weekend, I was at the Wichita Family Conference, our 19th conference at the Catholic Resource Center sponsors. We had Dr. Scott Hahn, Steve Ray, Raymond Arroyo, Tim Staples, and myself was there. And it was a great conference. I saw, I counted, are you ready? 94 women that were pregnant, obviously pregnant, okay? I mean, what? Uh, the, the families, all big families, they were so inspirational to meet. I, I wanted to meet every one, mom and dad and the kids. I want to tell you something. You know what touched me the most? A Down syndrome boy who I see there every year. He's about 11 years old, and he comes up to me. He says, Terry, how are you? He gives me a big bear hug. Man, I mean, and he just won't let go. I had more love from that little 11-year-old boy who's a Down syndrome baby. I thought, man, I wish the world could see this kid, man. He was awesome. So here's my point. We had a great conference. Every weekend, we're running around doing this, uh, you know, these uh, talks, and we run into lay people on fire for the faith. If people want to get the uh, recordings of those conference talks, just call me at the 877-526-2151. It'll be about a week or two, but they were a fantastic conference. And by the way, before we get back to our promise about sports and patriotism, we were asked to fill in for Christine Franklin this week, so... After our show, Mother Miriam is going to take an hour and give you some great teachings. And then, after Jesse and I slide our lunch down, we're going to join you this afternoon for another hour 
and I'll give you a tease. It's Steve Ray talking about angels. Everybody loves Steve Ray. So this is what we've been doing. And so when we talk about some of the problems in the church, it's not because we read a newspaper, okay? It's because we're out for 40 years in evangelization, and Jesse's right behind me on that. We've been doing it for decades. We see it. We love Holy Mother the Church so much that we want to see the purification come and purge the church of these people who are not, you know, following what Christ taught so that the future generations will have beautiful teachings and not and no compromise because you know we talk about admonishing the sinner it's not like we like to do this this was commanded by christ to go forth and teach the truths of the faith in season and out and if we're going to be persecuted for that okay because i I gotta tell you not many people are going to say what jesse and terry just said today you know why because they don't want to have to take the heat guess what i'm 5'5", 145 pounds Bring it on. Spiritual works of mercy, they're, if they're found in the Catechism 2447, one of them says, instruct the ignorant and counsel the doubtful. And that's what we do here uh, Monday through Friday. Have you heard about th- this, uh, the Cowboys? Jerry Jones, the owner, he said to the players, stand up for the national anthem or you're off the team. What do you think about that? I feel like giving him a high five, a <laughs> double high five. There we have a man with courage and common sense and a man that's teaching his players not only how to play football, throw pigskin around 100 yards, but what's more important to teach your young players is virtue. Yep. He's teaching them virtue. The training camp for the football team, the Dallas Cowboys, has started, and owner Jerry Jones wants to make one thing very clear to his team before the 2017 NFL season begins. Unless some of the players want to get hurt, this is what they need to respect. Okay? He said in a radio show last season, quote, I got to give a big pat on the back to our entire team, our coaching staff, our entire organization. We strongly, strongly support the flag in every way we support it. And it's almost ridiculous to be saying it. The people who for generations and generations have given it all up so that we can get out here and show off in front of millions of people on television. Headlines were filled uh, with news about how the free agent quarterback, Colin Ka- Kaepernick, knelt during the National Anthem last season with the San Francisco 49ers. And the NFL's preseason is about to start August 3rd, and it's going to be crucial. What started last week. This will be crucial for the decision with the Cowboys will keep standing uh, if you want to be employed with that team, do Good you? Call. Yeah, do you agree or disagree with Jerry Jones telling his players stand for the anthem or you're off the team? Call us eight 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 five two six two one five one. That's triple eight five two six two one five one. If you agree or disagree, I just want to understand our listeners. What do you think? You think that patriotism is important as a Christian, or do you think that? Uh, this is not a big deal that people can do whatever they want to do. And here's my here's my question. I'm just going to throw this out to you. Do you think the lack of patriotism in our country is due to, you're going to say, Terry, that's a big step. Are you ready? I'll say it. The drugs and alcohol addiction in our country. Do you think that has some play in why people don't have common sense? Do you think that maybe even, are you ready for this jump? In morality. Sexual licentiousness, sexual uh, uh, just freedom, where they do what they want, when they want. Do you think that might have something to do with patriotism? To say, who cares what the country is doing? I'm having fun. I got my marijuana. I got my, uh, you know, uh, illicit sex whenever I want it. Me, I think that has something to do with how we got calls coming in. But again, that's just my take. The uh, well, definition of patriotism for those that are saying, okay, so what does that mean? It means national loyalty. That's what patriotism means. It means love, support, and defense of one's country. That's the definition of patriotism. That's a very basic virtue Pretty that we're simple. called to us Christians. You know, for, if, if you want to say, okay, well, where does this come from? I'll tell you where it comes from. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. So we as Catholic Christians have a duty to both the civil society and the kingdom of God, the church, okay? And so 
you can't check out you can't check out a politics or your citizenship because you're a Christian. Because the idea of rejecting this world for heaven, that leads to the heresy of quietism. And on the other hand, rejecting the, the heaven for this world leads to the heresy of secularism. True Christianity says that we're not called to choose one over the other. Christians are called to do both because God made both. He made the earth and he made heaven. And so God's both creator and redeemer. So patriotism is basically an expression of... Of the two greatest commandments, love God and love your neighbor. That's what it basically is. And if you truly love God and you care about about eternity, then you're going to love your neighbor and you're going to care about the civil society in which your neighbors live in. Makes sense to me. We've got Ray up in San Francisco. Ray, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. What's on your mind, brother? Hi, guys. Hey, good to hear from you, Ray. Yeah, I listen to you guys all the time. And... Um, I thought of it the other day is that, uh, you know, Karl Marx said that religion is the opium of the masses. He did. Right? Yep. And now, so now nobody goes to church and everybody's on opium in America. So really what he said is is almost like we could use that as advertising. Hey, you got off opium, go back to church. I I see the connection. (laughs) Joe, you're making, Ray, you're making me laugh. You, but your, your, your truth, your, 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 it's an irony. It really is. What you just said, uh, it's true, but it's sad in one sense. Yep. Thanks. For and then another. Yeah, go ahead, Ray. You're, oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, can I, what, one other thing was like, you know what? I was talking to this young person um, who really, I mean, they, they didn't really, aren't really into church that much. You're going to, you know, Catholic, right? Yes. And, and they had a problem about their school. And I was like, you know, what do you, you know, it's like, I could see they want advice. It's like, okay, here's a rosary. Say the rosary, but first you got to go to a priest and you got to do confession yeah. and live in a state of, be in a state of grace. And you really want to get this goal. You want to get into this school, mm-hmm. do this. It'll work. So they're doing it. So Good. I think sometimes the young people, we got to look at what problem they have and say, hey, this will get you out of the problem if you try it, you know, because yeah. they want immediate something solution I agree. they don't see the big picture Ray, so, you, you, god bless you guys god bless you you got a phd in common sense keep doing what you're doing brother god love you call us anytime we've got a break to take but when we come back i gotta tell you a story on the airplane that happened to me i think i ran into a witch what i ran into a woman who told me something that made me think yeah i think she's on the other side of the team uh, not playing for jesus that's for sure but when we come back from the break, I'll tell you that quick story. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. We're giving away a first CD called What Every Catholic Needs to Know About Homosexuality by a good therapist, Thomas uh, Schmuger. He's a good friend of the show. And we also have other CDs, uh, Homosexuality, The Manly Experience, Causes and Treatments. We want to help the people who have same-sex attraction. You can call and get that CD by calling 877-526-2151. And by the way, if you're going to sell your house... Go to CatholicRC.org for pro-life realtor that will support the Terry and Jesse show. Here's a good Bible verse on patriotism right from St. Peter. It's in 1 Peter 2, verse 17. Look at what St. Peter writes. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. What? St. Peter just said honor the emperor. Right. You know who the emperor was at the time? It was Nero. Peter's saying, honor the emperor. Why is he saying that? Because Christianity understands patriotism. This is Bishop David O'Connell, and you're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show at Immaculate Heart Radio. Back to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Want to join the conversation? Call 888-526-2151. Now here's Terry and Jesse. We're back. TJ, totally Jesus, truth and justice. Two apostles talking about patriotism. We're going to go to the phone lines, but talking about patriotism, St. Paul, who was beheaded by the emp- by the uh, orders of the Emperor Nero, he was beheaded. What did he say about government? Read Romans 13. He tells you to obey government. St. Paul, he says that government comes from God. It's ordained by God. And what about St. Peter? What does he say about corrupt governments? I mean, St. Peter, he was crucified upside down by a corrupt government under Emperor Nero. 
I, I showed you the Bible verse. It's in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. St. Peter, who was crucified by the orders of Nero, what does he say? Honor Nero. He said that. Honor the emperor. In other words, Christianity teaches patriotism to a country. It doesn't become before our faith, but once again, because of our faith, we want to evangelize that culture and we want to do it so with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the phone line. We got Franco from Santa Fe Springs. Go ahead, Franco. You're on. Hey, I just wanted to comment on uh, Jerry Jones, uh, mm -hmm. what he's done, and that's absolutely correct. Patriotism is, uh, is it, we need to recognize our military that's, uh, you know, that are fighting for our, our freedoms as well. Um, I'm a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a veteran. Thank you. And, um, and what I've done uh, to show my patriotism uh, uh, with the NFL is I actually protested the NFL last year, and I didn't watch any games. No, no Super Bowl, no nothing. Wow! I gave it up. Uh, I, I don't want to. I, I don't know if I can say this on the line, but one of the soda companies they had a, a you know they were selling their 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 cola for a lot less mm -hmm. than the other competitor, but they had the NFL on. So I went with the more expensive one uh, because of that Man, that's, as well. So you. you know. It, uh, and, and that's what it's about, yep. uh, 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 honoring our country as well. Uh, you know, our country is benevolent because we are Christians. And I don't care what Obama said. We are a Christian Amen. nation. And now, with, with yep. just with that, w one last question sure. to keep both going, of you. Keep going. Um, <laughs> uh, you. I believe you were speaking of Father Calloway regarding the, um, uh, uh, the uh, uh, rosary. And one battle, though, that you mentioned, and, and it's been driving me nuts. Yeah, Lepanto or was, which one? Uh, the, the battle that the Muslims, when the uh, Catholics, uh, uh, when everybody started breaking away from the Catholic Church, and Christianity was at a, at a lower point, not as strong, mm -hmm. and that's when the Muslims came, attacked, uh, came and attacked uh, uh, they were trying to attack Rome, and all the farmers and everybody went at it, and they won the battle against a greater army, a Muslim mm -hmm. army. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I just like to know what what battle was that? Yeah, I, it's not coming to my head, the, Jesse. Which the one? The two is famous it? battles. Lepanto. Well, was, well we, we we had the Crusades for eight hundred years, uh, fighting against uh, the Islamic invaders. But the two famous ones that are always talked about is the Battle of Lepanto in 1571 mm -hmm. and the Battle in Vienna, Austria right. in 1678. Those are the two. There was other ones. I mean, you had Charles the Martel. You had Richard the Lionheart. Well, there was other smaller ones, but those are the two <laughs> ones that really stick out historically. And it, did you say Lepanto, L-A-P-A-N-T-O? L-E. L-E-P-A-N-T-O. And, and you just to it. remind you, uh, you had said if we would have lost that battle, we would have been. Um, <laughs> That's uh, true. And this was last week we, when you were on on the Sakara show. Yeah, actually, right. You know, we, we wouldn't be having the Terry and Jesse show. We would be having the uh, the Shahid and Ali show. And we'd <laughs> exactly, be having the exactly. And it was that battle. Was it Lepanto? Yes, sir. That's the one. Ah, oh, you, you guys are great. I really, I you know what. Uh, you and Mother Miriam are my favorite shows, <laughs> you guys. Well, you know By what? Far. You know what we have in common with Mother Miriam? I'll just be honest with you. Is we're not uh, politically correct, and we're not right versus left. We're right versus wrong. And when you ask us a question, Franco, you'll get an answer. And Mother's that same way. I think we eat at the same trough of food, which is the Catholic <laughs> faith. And all the others should, too. And, we do. And, and, you, and you taught me something, and, and I use it all the time. And, and I am a part of the MMA People say the MMA. I say, yeah, Mother Mary's Army. Amen, brother. I, I use that all the time. Guys, thank right. you so God. much for your great okay. job and, and your teachings. Our pleasure. God loves you. All right. Us. Powerful story yeah. here about uh, this article. It's called Remembering St. Padre Pio's Words on Abortion. I've never read anything from the, this saint on abortion, but he, he, here's what he said. This is chilling. Yeah, okay? yeah it really is. He, uh, it's uh, There's a... There's a famous well, St. Father Pio. First of all, the article says believed the board, abortion was not just the murder of an innocent human being, but also a true suicide. W what do we mean by that? Okay, Father 
Peregrino Funicelli, who assisted Padre Pio for many years, confronted the saint on the sin and he asked him, and this is what he said, Today, Father Pio, you denied a absolution to a woman because she had voluntary, uh, voluntarily undergone an abortion. Why have you been so rigorous with this poor, unfortunate person? Padre Pio would sometimes refuse to give absolution to a penitent if they showed insufficient contrition. Often they would return and he'd give them absolution if they were sincere. So St. Padre Pio responded. He said, The day that people lose their whore for abortion will be the most terrible day for humanity. Abortion is not only a homicide, but also a suicide. Shouldn't we have the courage to manifest our faith before those who commit two crimes within one act? So then Father Pegrino asks him, suicide? And, and St. Padre Pio responds. He says, the suicide of the human race will be understood by those who will see the earth populated by the elderly and depopulated of children burnt as a desert. And at the very end of the article, it says, in case you're wondering about Italy, this is, this is the mother of Catholicism, this country. This is the headquarters. It says, over 6 million have died in Italy since abortion was legalized in Italy in 1978. And like many countries in the West, Italy is also criticized by the pro-life movement and Catholics as a whole for contracepting itself out of existence. Ouch. True, scathing, true true word. That article is on our website, catholicrc.org or jesseromero.com. Don't forget, anyone, man or woman, who participated in an abortion, you have repentance, repentance of that sin. Go to confession, right? Get the sin resolved. Also, Check out Project Rachel for healing because you can be forgiven through the sacrament of confession, but your woundedness through that abortion, whether you're the man or the woman, needs to be dealt with. And that's what Project Rachel does. So we want to reach out to anyone who's listening that has had an abortion. Go to confession, get involved with Project Rachel, have that healing take place, and have that forgiveness, the, the precious blood of Jesus Christ come down upon you and have that sin forgiven because, as Padre Pio said, you need to repent. You can't have it forgiven if you don't repent. And you also have, some people may repent, but you also have to show contrition. contrition. And obviously, people weren't demonstrating to Padre Pio that they had contrition. What does contrition mean? It's a Latin word, contritus. It means to be crushed. You're having your heart crushed or broken or smashed. In other words, where, where the priest could see, man, this person's really sorry or are they just going to confession and being flippant? Oh, yeah, Father, um, uh, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I had a, an, an abortion two months ago. And um, I, In other words, the priest, Father Pio would examine and say, right. is, this, is this coming from their heart or just their mouth? And so a priest, again, has a power to withhold uh, absolution if they feel that there's no contrition. Uh, just want to mention one more thing real quick. Sure. Is uh, got an email. This is a this is a whole show, but we're not <laughs> we can't. Somebody asked us, Terry Jesse, as Christians, are we supposed to turn our cheek when someone hits us on the street? I responded to that. I probably took about five hundred words to respond. <laughs> I did a whole Bible study in this in this word file. If you go to my website, jesseromero.com, click on blog. I respond on the question that was asked of us as Christians. Are we supposed to turn our cheek when someone hits us on the street? And I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, and you're going to be very surprised because most people have never heard what the Bible says about this. Also, if you want to hear what Fulton Sheen has to say today, he's the most inspirational bishop in, in, in my lifetime. Amen. Uh, that, that's why I put him on my website every day, Daily Reflections with Archbishop Sheen. Uh, when I come back from Mass, that's the first thing I read is, what is Sheen telling me today? And today he talks about when love fails. So if you want to hear him give you spiritual direction on a broken relationship or when love fails, go and listen to Daily Reflections with Sheen from my website, jesseromero.com, and he will mend your broken heart. I'm gonna, I made a promise I'd tell you a story. I might run out of time before the break because I might have to do it after the break. When I came back from Wichita, everybody, from the family conference, I was getting on a plane, and I ran into a young couple— who were very pro home pro marijuana. Matter of fact, she said she was stoned. She had smoked a lot of marijuana. 
And when I come back from the break, I'm going to tell you how the dialogue went. You're going to be amazed what she told me when I chatted with her about her marijuana use. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. Yes, that's a teaser. You can pick up some CDs on helping people with same-sex attraction, confronting the gay agenda with Tim Staples, Deacon Bob McDonald, and Father Frank. You can get all kinds of, of CDs from therapists on the manly experience, what every Catholic needs to know about homosexuality. This is all available because we love them. We love people. I'm going to call you to, to be a chaste man just like I'm a chaste man as a married man or a single man. We're all called to chastity. This should help you. Call 877-526-2151. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you the story. When I was on the plane last night, a woman who was high on marijuana, and when she tells you what she's going to tell me when I ask a question, you're going to say, unbelievable. Don't turn the dial because here, Terry and Jesse, we're here to inspire you before we expire. We're going to inspire you with teachings of church and Christ. We'll be right back in a moment. This is Dr. Scott Hahn, and you are listening to the Terry and Jesse Show on Immaculate Heart Radio. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Hahn. I saw you over the weekend at our family conference in Wichita, and on my way back from the airport, I was in Las Vegas last night. And as people heard a little bit, I was um, confronted by a young couple who were high on marijuana. And the comment made was uh, that uh, marijuana is good for ne- Nevada. And when he, she said that, I responded. I said, well, I got something better than marijuana. And she came closer to me and said, yeah, what is that, man? <laughs> I said, God. Man, she looked at me like I was like a deer in the headlights. What? God? I said, yeah. Well, I know the meaning and purpose of life. You smoke your marijuana, you get your drugs, you're in la la land. You don't know, you know, you're, you're, you you don't you don't know, know the meaning and purpose of life when you're high. She says to me, "Well, I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> I like being high. I, uh, I I feel good." And I said, "Well, there's songs they sing in two places, and you you guess where they sing them. One they say I did it my way, and the other one is I did it God's way." And she looked at me and said, "Oh yeah, well you know what." I'm my own God. I'm doing it my way. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? She's a goddess? You know what she is? Jesse told me later when I told him the story. Jess, what kind of woman would that be to say something like that to me? Only three types of people would have responded that way, saying I'm a God. Yeah. Number one, that's part of New Age spirituality. Yep. She may have been part of a New Age religion because they're taught that they're gods, that there's a God within. And, the, the, and number two, she may have been a Satanist. Satanists also believe that they have this, this transcendence, transcendence within them. Mm-hmm. Same with witches. Wow. Witches will also believe that there's a transcendental element within them. And also, this is classic with drug addicts. This is why so many people like to use drugs. This is the attraction to drugs. When you read all the studies, they'll tell you, all the experts will tell you that people who alter their mind feel like God. The word is used, they feel transcendent. And that's a classic case of a drug addict who's probably dabbling in maybe witchcraft or the New Age movement. Well, all I can say is at Mass this morning, I lifted her up on the altar and I'm praying for her. Now she's in my prayers daily because that really blew me away. That was my story. Let's go to San Diego. Alan in San Diego, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. Hey, thank you, guys. I'm also an MMA uh, member. <laughs> ah, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Uh, uh, that, that's good. That lady you were just talking about, you do yeah. pray for them. And I me, uh, being of uh, Mexican uh, descent, yeah. uh, you know, I'm a conservative. I voted for Trump. And, man, I, I got a huge, huge family. Yeah. There's a lot of us that think alike and stuff, but uh, my brother, I'm working on him. I love him. And he told me uh, yesterday, he said, you must have gone to Penn State. And I go, Penn State? He said, yeah, Pendejo State. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, and, and, it's like, it's like, it's it's like uh, for me, it's like stupid state. That's yeah, what it means. I like, get it. I get stupid it. Yeah. state, yeah. Right, yeah. right. And, you know, and I just want to say, you know, I had a good laugh, and I go, you know, because he knows why I voted yeah. for him, you know, Catholic values. Of and, course. you know, I, I said I can't vote for somebody that, that supports abortion and, and all those other things, contrary to the Catholic Church. But, mm-hmm. 
you know, just like you, Terry, you know, we, we, we have to, you know, pray for these people and not get angry. That's right. And uh, try and win them over. And little by little, you know, they, they understand. They, they, they quite don't get it and everything. But uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you guys, too, here in San Diego. Yeah, I was just going to ask you. You're going to be at the L- work. Right. Thank you. That, you, j- oh, you better believe it. And uh, um, so I prayed for you guys this morning. I prayed for you guys a lot to keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, Along Al. with the other uh, uh, I Heart people. Amen. And, Al, you're talking about the Elevate Conference coming up on the 19th in San Diego. If people want to still come, I think there's still room. Go to ihradio.com to get your tickets. Al, I'm looking forward to meeting you because I don't believe we've ever met. And Jesse is also. So keep up the good work, brother. All right. You, you guys, too. Bye. Right, bye-bye now. Al's one of those high information callers. Exactly. Uh, r- really appreciate hearing him. Did you know that Roe versus Wade mm. is uh, is being rejected by the majority of the people in this country? Good news. Yep. That th- this is an inspirational good news story. The American people are against Roe versus Wade, that Supreme Court ruling that legalized abortion. In a Gallup poll released June 9th of this year, a clear majority. Fifty-four percent say abortion should be illegal or legal in only a few circumstances. This is a stark rebuke to Roe v. Wade, which effectively legalized abortion through term and for any reason whatsoever. Uh, Americans, again, by a, by a, a larger margin, 49 percent to 43 percent, believe that abortion is morally wrong. And this is also a testament to the support for the pro-life position. And again, here's my take on this, my perspective. I believe that every administration brings with them some type of, uh, some type of worldview. And I think, in fact, I've read an article, we've done a show on it in the past. That's right. This is the most pro-life administration we've had since Ronald Reagan. Okay? I'm going to say it again. And I can, anybody is challenging me, I can give you the article if you email me at just, uh, uh, justyourmerit.com if you want the article. This is the most pro-life administration. In fact, the article actually says it's more pro-life than the Reagan administration. And also something else that I read over the weekend that I was kind of happy about. Terry, I just read that they have Bible studies in the White House. Praise God. Yeah, that they get together, the Catholic and Protestants and stuff, and they talk about, they, they read the Word of God, and they try to encourage and build each other up. This is something, trust me, that would not have happened under the Obama administration. To have your staff having Bible studies, to me, praise God, that's great news. Also, the Texas governor, Greg Abbott, recently signed legislation that banned D&E, the dilation and evacuation abortions. And the Missouri government, governor, Eric uh, Grittles, called be- lawmakers back to work on a new pro-life measure. Why is this? Well, I believe, like Jess just said, President Trump, is it's the effect of a president who's pro-life. But Father Frank Pavone said it, folks, where this is, battle is not going to be won in a year or two. Father Frank said it on our show. He believes it's going to take four consecutive pro-life presidencies. So we're talking four times four, 16 years for this battle. Are you ready to fight it? I am. And I would just tell you, go to our website, catholicrc.org. Get the statistic. Put it on your social media because I think more people will realize that the unborn have rights. I mean, think about this. If we were back in 1850 and we had the Dred Scott decision, which was saying that black people weren't humans, can you imagine you saying, no, I believe they are? You're going to be persecuted, right? Well, we've got the same thing here. People are saying that babies don't have any rights. And are you going to be quiet? And I'll just say this real quick. When you're quiet and you don't speak when you need to, I believe... Like Pope Felix III said in 473, that silence can be a betrayal of the truth. And I would encourage all of us at least to share this information with people so that we can continue to push the football towards the goalpost for a touchdown for those babies. I know you want to be part of that team, and so do I. And that's why I'll even give away some CDs of Dr. Bernard Nathanson on his conversion story, the largest abortion clinic in the Western world. If you need tools, I'll give you a couple copies of that by calling 877-526-2151. You can still get the other ones, what every Catholic needs to know about homosexuality or our treatments for uh, people who have same-sex attraction. We're giving those away, too. 877-526-2151 or go online to catholicrc.com. 
org. Remember, we're on the winning team. We know the end of the story. Amen. You know, the fact that uh, mo- more people in America are rejecting Roe versus Wade abortion, this is, let's just be honest. <laughs> Terry just said it. It's called the Trump effect. Yeah. It, it, it's pretty evident because the president brings with him a worldview. And under the Trump effect, one of the things that I've noticed is that human rights legislation is, is happening, is quickening in more and more states. You're seeing more protection for the unborn, and it's gaining across the country. And similarly, what you see from one state to another, you're seeing also this determined effort to secure religious liberty. And here's also something also very interesting, the way things break down in our country, is that religious Americans are pro-Trump, okay? And it, there was a study that was done, a Pew Research Center, June 20th. Pew Research Center said that among those who attend church weekly or more, the respective figures are 48 and 45 percent. In other words, it, 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 if you go to church with any regularity, you have more of a propensity to have voted for Trump. If you don't go to church and if you're secular, if you have a secular worldview, it's more than likely that you have voted for Hillary Clinton. It's very interesting that religious Americans seem to have voted for this administration. And guess what? Uh, I think we're getting a, a bang for our buck because, as I said, this is the most pro-life administration, even exceeds, exceeds the administration of Ronald Reagan. Well said. And I just want to remind you, when Mother comes on for this next hour, listen to Mother Miriam, listen to her show, because when Mother's over at her hour... Uh, Christine Franklin's taking a break, a rest, and we're going to be filling in for her most of the week. And we're going to have our guest Steve Ray come on at 1 o'clock California time. And I just don't think, I think you'd want to share that with your friends. So 1 o'clock, we'll be back here at the Terry and Jesse Show filling in for Christine Franklin. If you'd like to get on it's the free literature that we have, the CDs, call 877-526-2151. I'd like to ask Jesse a big question, important. Jesse, what state should we be living in, brother? Not in the state of mortal sin. If you're in that state, jump out. Run out of that state as fast as you can. How do you get out of the state of mortal sin? Okay, don't jump in your car. You go to confession. Yep. And what state do you want to jump into? You want to jump into the state of grace as soon as possible. And guess what? Park your car there. Guess what? Build a house there. Guess what? Live there. Because in the end, there's only two teams, winners and losers. What team are you going to be in? Well said. Don't forget, in an hour from now, we're coming back with you. Christine Franklin's taking a break. We're going to fill in for her. Yes, we like the pinch hit here at Immaculate Heart Radio. Always ready, willing, and able here. The Terry and Jesse Show. Thank you for your prayers. And I'll leave you with this. Full sheen ahead. God love you. We'll see you in an hour for another show.